Oh, don't you dare hold back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance with me. Hello, everybody. My name is Abuna Isaac Bears, Mary Science Lab. Happy birthday, uh, happy 111th birthday, actually, to painter Jackson Pollock, who was an expressionist painter who made some paintings with the force of his body, which really made, uh, made people uh, judging his artwork amazed by uh, how he used uh, the, something now called a drip technique. His paintings are kind of like an organized chaos, but whatever. Let's stop talking about someone who's unrelated to what we're doing today, which is A, or assignment, 66. So we're going to be talking about centripetal motion, no, not centripetal motion, circular motion, in a lot of these assignments, because circular motion is a very important basic physics skill. Four problems today, so get ready. So here we have problem number one. A five kilogram bucket is being spun around in a circle with a rope of length 0.6 meters. And this is a very fast spinner, and so it makes two revolutions a second. So, let's put five kilogram mass on it. What we're trying to find is the centripetal acceleration of this bucket. So, how do we find that? Well, centripetal acceleration, as we've seen from our previous assignment, A65, is V squared over R. But how do we find V? Because we're not given it in this problem. Well, think about the length of this circle. This circle would have a length, a perimeter, which in reality is actually the circumference, of 2 pi r. And we know r because we know the length of the string. So that uh, v is d over t. So now we already have the 2 pi r part covered. But now what is t? Well, t is the time for one revolution, also known as period, indicated with a capital T. And we can derive our t from this, which is the frequency. So a t is v squared over r. This is going to become the square of this, which is 4, that's 2 squared, pi squared, r squared, over, and you have to square the denominator to t squared. So now, that gives us 4 pi squared, r squared, over t squared, r. Now we cancel out these, and we get 4 pi squared, r, over t squared. So now, what is t? Well, we know F. F is 2 hertz, I guess you could say that. Uh, it's 2 revolutions per second. So T is simply 1 over F. So that is 1 half seconds for each revolution. So that means that we have 4 pi squared times 0 0.6 over 0.5 squared. And this gives you about 94.75 meters per second squared. That's a pretty high centripetal acceleration. All right, so now let's go to the moon. What we're going to do is we have the Earth here, right? Beautiful Earth. So that's our Earth. And now we have the moon. So here's our moon. And Given that the distance from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon, oh, that's bad. The center of the Earth to the center of the Moon is about 384,000 kilometers. Find, <coughs> find the centripetal acceleration of the Moon. All right. So now, oh wait, uh, so now, what can we do here? Well, AC is, oh, and I forgot. The period of the moon, one orbit of the moon, is about 27.3 days. So now, first step, 
convert all the units to meters per second. Oh, I don't want kilometers per day squared. That doesn't really make any intuitive sense. So this is going to have to go, and this becomes 384 million. Or, in a better to understand way, 3.84 times 10 to the 8. So, AC simply v squared over R. And once again, we use the equation that we learned last time. This is actually just 4 pi squared R over T squared. So now, uh, what is 27.3 days? Well, uh, what we're going to have to do is 27.3 days. There are 24 hours for each day. There are 60 minutes in each hour. There are 60 seconds for each minute. Multiplying all these together, we get the answer 2,358,720. I definitely memorized that number. Okay, 4 pi squared times our r, 3.84 times 10 to the 8, over 2358720 whole squared. Well, that gives us about 0 0.00272. And this can be written as 2.73 times 10 to the minus third, because there were one, two, three thingos here. All right. So now, this is meters per second squared, sorry. That is our answer for problem number two. So now, let's erase this. For problem number three, we're actually going to be, wait, we're actually going to be going back to the moon for this one. We're going to have to do this time. Well, we're going to try and find the net force on the moon two different ways, with FC and with the universal law of gravitation, FG. So now, uh, by the way, just for uh, so you guys know, the mass of the Earth that we're going to use is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, and the mass of the moon we're going to use is 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd. So now, let's do both of these. So for FC, we use M times AC. So that's just the mass of the moon, 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd, times 2.73 times 10 to the minus 3, and that gets us to about 2 times, sorry about that, 2 times 10 to the uh, 20. And uh, the only non-zero digit is when you go all the way up there. So this is 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. And FG is going to be G big M, which is Earth, little m, which is the moon, over R squared. So now, plugging all the numbers in, that gets us 6.67, don't worry, I'll add the powers of 10 later, times M is 5.98, times little m is 7.35 over r squared. So what is our r again? 3.84 uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th. We're going to have 3.84 squared. And then we have times 10 to the negative 11th plus 24th plus 22 minus and uh, we multiply the 8 over here by 2 to get 16. So now, what is 24 plus 22? 46. What is 46 minus 16? 30. What is 30 minus 11? Not 29, but 19. 10 to the minus 19th. Wait, oh, sorry. 10 to the positive 19th. 30 minus 11 is not that. Okay, so now... Uh, adding this all up, it gives you slightly less than 2 times 10 to the 20th because this gives you a double digit answer. So, 2 times 10 to the 20 and 2 times 10 to the 20th. And by the way, if you use. What? Oh, yeah. N newtons and 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. And you might find that if you do the numbers in the calculator, they have a slight difference, which isn't really comparable to the 20th 
which is 1.5 times 10 to the 18 newtons. But this is because of the low accuracy of G, M, and R. So if we use perfect numbers for those three, then these would be the exact same. But without those, then we can't do this. So, uh, that is attached to the bucket broke. If the rope that was attached to the bucket just broke, then which direction would the bucket fly off in? This is just general. We're just trying to get a general definition here. And the correct answer to this question is perpendicular to the string. Or you can also say tangential to the path. Although these two mean the same thing. Because if you ever have a tangent on the circle, it will be perpendicular to one radius. All right, so now, well, the second part of this is, given that the mass is five kilograms, the rope is not broken, but is rather, uh, still a radius of 0.6 meters and T is once again a uh, one half second per revolution uh, this is two revs per second but uh, we found out T for the previous problem what we're going to find out is FC what is FC well we don't actually need all this huggly bug because FC can be written as MAC. If you remember, all the way back to the first problem, we solved for MAC to be 97.7, uh, not, uh, not 97, not it's 94.75, and multiplying our mass of five by this, the result that we get is 473.75 newtons. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. Happy 111th birthday to Jackson Pollock. We'll see you in the next one. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the God of Mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.